Shall we start, Michael? Yeah, I'm here. I'm ready. Um, let's start. There are so many attendees. Let's start. Great. Shall I, shall, I, shall I push on, Bassam, or are you going to do an introduction? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Proceed. Brilliant. Fantastic. Good uh, morning or good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for attending this uh, webinar from Idea to Innovation. Um, let's, let's push on. Um, the first slide, I'm going to have to... Well, give me one second. I need to make that bigger. Yes, the first one I need to explain. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to make that a little bit larger. So here's a picture of a young boy. That is a young me. That's Michael Allen when I was probably three years old. Um, and I need to explain this. This is one of my parents' favorite photographs. I grew up in, in Britain, and Britain's an island, and it's not very, and you don't, not many people live very far away from the beach. So we take our children to play sandcastles in the beach. Um, these fine chaps here are Kuwaitis. So we moved to Kuwait in 1973, where my dad had a job there. This is my, uh, my dad's uh, friend. Um, but of course, we brought our ideas with us. And our idea is we go to this, we go somewhere where there's sand and we play sandcastles. So of course, here are these very fine Arabs standing in the shade, looking at these two British boys playing sandcastles in the desert. <laughs> um, here's me now, and you can see that the aging process has not served me well. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I would consider myself to be an innovator. I've founded three businesses. I blog and I speak about innovation and innovation strategy, and I help organizations innovate. Um, I'm also a partner in an idea management software business, and that supports idea um, collection and um, uh, idea competitions, both in in terms of uh, large organisations, but also as consumers and things like on on Facebook, etc. Um, I also walk the talk in that I share all of my ideas on uh, online, and I'm going to explain to to you a little bit more about that um, uh, in a moment. Uh, you can follow what I do on my website on my blog, which is everything brilliant, and that's everything brilliant starts with an idea everythingbrilliant.co.uk or on Facebook as well. The presentation is in two parts, um, and they're very two separate parts, and it is black and white. It's ideas and innovation. I'm going to talk more about what the difference are, it is uh, as we go through. But ideas, I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about what they are, how you can have more of them, and how you can facilitate others to have more of them. Then with in terms of innovation, so turning ideas into action, about experimentation, about socializing and prototyping and commercializing, how you turn an idea into something, into an innovation. I'm actually going to start with the real basics, so forgive me if this sounds like um, I'm, um, I'm talking far too basic, there's a reason for this. I want, what I want to leave you with after this webinar is some real tools, some, some fun, energizing useful tools to help you go from idea to innovation to start to, to innovate. So the real basic, what are ideas? Um, think of ideas as millions upon millions upon millions of Lego bricks. Uh, each one of those bricks is a piece of knowledge. It's an experience that you've had, an insight that you gained, something you've learned, something you've seen, something you've heard. And of course, we're gaining those new bricks all of the time. Every time we're looking at something and we're learning something and we're seeing a new idea, we're creating another another brick. And the more inquisitive we are, the more welcome to new ideas we are, the more we experiment, the more we use challenge, we the more which we can challenge ourselves and others, the more bricks we acquire. Then ideas happen when we connect the bricks. It's as simple as that. This is the simplest way I, I, I've ever come across um, that I've thought of to describe what an idea is. So there's a wonderful game. There's a great game here. Um, and I can challenge you to go and go back and, and do this and start to start to, to, to innovate in the simplest terms. So you take 12 Lego bricks. Now, they can be these Lego bricks. They can be any 12 Lego bricks. So if you have children that still have Lego bricks, if you have nephews or nieces that have Lego bricks, if you have grandchildren, 
uh, or brothers or sisters that have Lego bricks. Like, go and find these 12 bricks and start to do something with them, start to innovate. Now, if you do this with children, what you see is children play and they play without any inhibitions and they start, generally they start to create things from the physical world, things that they recognize, but they do it so easily. Um, that might be things that humans built, like ships or planes, or it could be things from nature. I think that's meant to, that's um, a, um, a turtle or an eagle or a duck, and I think that's actually a camel on the left-hand side as well. But they, they do it immediately. They don't have any inhibitions. Now, of course, as adults, we are taught not to look stupid. We are taught to figure things out. We're taught to to, to always try and create the perfect thing, not just start. So adult, adults actually find it much harder. We, we start to think with our brains, we start to figure out what shall I build, and the lesson is just start. Think with your hands. Um, and when people, when I give these bricks, and when you start, and if you, if you can take those bricks from, from your children's um, play and take them to work, and describe this this innovation game, you will see this. People will think, oh, God, what should, goodness, what shall I make? And if you just just start piecing together and see what happens, then, then actually, even we as adults can make stuff. We might, similarly, we might make stuff from the physical world, so things we recognize. So here's actually quite, some of them are quite sophisticated. So that's a crane, and that's a combine harvester, and that's a pony eat, eating from a trough we it takes us a lot longer but if we can think with our hands we get there very quickly now just for fun and this is one of the downsides of a web of a, um, a webinar I can't talk to you I can't see and you can't respond to me very easily but for fun one of these um, ideas made with with bricks was created by this it's the the richest man that I would know that I would call a friend um, he, he made a, a lot of money out of software, actually around business process uh, management. His name's Ian Gotts. He now sits in a beautiful house overlooking San Francisco Bay um, uh, and spends his time talking about uh, ideas. One of these was made by a multi-millionaire businessman. Take a quick look and decide which one it is. And the answer is the simplest one. I don't know if there's a lesson there, but I think it's it's a fascinating, uh, fascinating um, idea that actually even the clever, ultra clever, creative people, they still create something that's actually very very simple. So what we then do is we set a challenge, and this is where adults start to have real fun. So. When I then say, and if you if you can find those bricks and take them to your to your workplace, and uh, with your team, say, now make me something useful for your work desk, then ideas happen really quickly. Um, so that's the idea that you can keep your iPhone charger. So, you, so when you unplug your, you don't need to reach down on the floor to collect your iPhone charger. Um, that actually this odd thing here sits on your jams onto the monitor to keep your glasses safe and a coaster for your drink and a little print to put your a business card or a post-it note or actually if you need to remember to take some pills halfway through the day there's a little box that you make you, you get the point when we see a challenge when we 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 when we are asked to solve a problem ideas come really quickly um, and anyone can play this game it you just need 12 bricks it's design thinking so it's thinking with our hands it's a brilliant example of how if you think with your hands it becomes really easy if you start if you disengage your your tendency to try and envision, envision the idea in your brain first and you just, just start building ideas happen really quickly it's actually a very good game to flex our creative muscles if you want if you get people into a workshop and you want to start thinking about ideas, you can break down barriers, you can have some fun, you can be creative, you can switch people into a thinking mode to a thinking with your hands mode. It's a great game to, to do there. And it also shows the impact of setting a challenge, of, of creating a problem and asking people to, to engage to solve the problem. Actually, it also highlights the paradox that sometimes you can, you can aid creativity by giving people restrictions. You can also go to 
12bricks.co.uk and look at some more ideas and learn more about the, uh, the approach or follow it on Twitter or, or uh, Facebook. The really key thing, and this is, this is really important, this is the secret source of innovation. It's connections. If you want more ideas, trigger more connections. Create and share ideas. Ask questions. Create provocations. Now I'm going to show you um, some of my ideas, but rather than just starting on idea number one and going to idea number 260 or whatever it is now, I'm actually going to categorize those and I'm going to show you some more innovation tools. 12 Bricks is an innovation tool. I'm going to show you some more and I'm going to start to share some, some of my ideas to, as, as examples of that. Now why do I share my ideas? Actually, I, by sharing my ideas so publicly, it's rather odd. Very, I have come across perhaps one or two other or other people that do this, but why do I do it? The first reason I do it is actually it's difficult. Getting ideas out of people can be very, very difficult. And all things that are difficult um, are difficult before, before they come easy. So doing it is the only way to solve that. Also, I'm a firm believer that if you, you can absolutely, you can invent on your own, but to innovate, you need a crowd of people. You can't innovate on your own. You can absolutely invent something, but you need a crowd of people to test it, to tell you that's what they want, to adopt it. And even if it's the best idea in the world, without that crowd of people that, that adopt it, you still haven't innovated. Innovation is about commercializing. It's about implementing the idea. The next reason, and it's the most obvious reason, is that the idea is just the first step and it's the easiest step that you can do so you can have any one I've said 260 odd ideas already you can have any of those because by definition I haven't done anything with it because um, it's just an idea it's it's really is that simple and the, the last one which is um, so very important people are significantly more more likely to share their ideas with you if you share your ideas with them and, and that is a privilege but like all privileges it comes with a responsibility so if you go to my blog and look for how to listen to ideas there's some simple rules a simple poster if you like that tells you um, how to uh, how to listen to ideas now the 12 bricks game was a facilitation technique it was a we created a challenge so here are some more challenges and challenges are the really important thing so challenge is what, I, what I, I'm calling a challenge is there to provoke ideas either by asking a question, by setting a scene, or inspiring. Now, one way to do that is to shock people, is to give people an emotional response. Now, if you have vertigo, this is a very emotional um, image. It creates a response. And the, the, the challenge is, if there was zero chance of failure, what should we build next? So we're really looking for those blue sky type of ideas. You can inspire people um, by showing them something which is truly brilliant and asking them the question. So look what you can achieve when you focus on one process. What process could give us the same game gain um, if we could? So that's five seconds to do something which is actually very, very hazardous. If some one of those guys gets something wrong, there could be a very severe implications. And one, two three, four, five. So if you can inspire people, that helps. Now th this was one that actually worked very well for us. This was a bank um, and it was a private bank. So their tool, their process, their product, if you like, are relationships. It's, it's names and addresses and telephone numbers of people with money. And, they, and the, the bank's job, their product, is to build a relationship with that person with, with, with some money to sell them products, um, and whatever those products are. So we say, but, you know, this is, these are our tools, but what's going to change in the next five years? And of course, the way that um, certainly my children will spend their money or invest their money, they don't want a relationship with someone in a bank, a salesperson. They want to, they want to behave in different ways. Um, this is another one of one of the ones that actually worked very well. I, I don't know whether um, in your culture you you spend time on the internet looking at cats doing stupid things. So look, look, this is ten hours. Look, it's ten hours long of cats and three million hits. So, now the question is, it's again, it's it, it 
in some cases it's appropriate to use humor in others it isn't but if it is so what processes or process steps do you take that waste time or add no value and some more provocations um, this is a very powerful one what is what is it about our organization you wouldn't want our best customers to know about and how can we fix it um, if we were to build the Rolls Royce of our products, what would it look like? Um, actually, it really sucks when this happens, but we could fix it. Um, when problem X happens, it's the cost is high. Um, what are the new things we could sell to our existing customers? What other services could we offer that we could excel at? And they're, they're all ones that worked very well. It's, re it's a really, really important part. Here's another tool um, called an idea hack. Um, again, this is another one you can you can go and, and, and try and, and implement very, very simply. A hack is you take something and you change or reorder parts of it or its components to create new value. Now, one of the best examples of this is called IKEA Hackers. Um, now, when you go to IKEA Hackers, and it's ikeahackers.net, it actually looks awfully like IKEA website because it has look look at the, the living room and the bathroom and the kitchen but actually what it is it's people who have taken something from IKEA this is their photo lamp um, which they must have sold millions of and they've hacked it so they've just if you go onto that they've described what they bought from the hardware store to turn it into that so that's obviously a, a lamp that they can push that way to go over the computer when it's necessary and a way to go over the dining room table when necessary as well. And IKEA Hackers is full of hacks. Of You take something and you repurpose it. Or you, if I take this product and this product and this product and I put it in this order, I get something new. It's absolutely inspiring. Here's some of my hacked ideas. Um, well, actually, number one is to run an idea hack in your workplace and I would strongly recommend and actually is this one here the 69 you take a candy bar and you just and you use that as the tool to describe hacking ideas so how can we change that how can we reorder the components of a candy bar to create something that's different that create we can turn it into a liquid or we can add energy to it to make it an energy drink or we can flatten it to make it into something that's mouth you know the size of that goes with perfectly with coffee or, or whatever it might be and you can have some fun and you can be, again people can flex those innovation muscles and then you put one of your products on the table say so, well okay how can we hack that what can we take away what can we reorder to create new value Another really useful tool is called differentiation, making something different. So you take something existing product and you change the value proposition by changing either the utility, i.e. what it's there for, the configuration or a customer experience. And the best example of this is salt. Now salt is a um, is a necessity for human life. It was a commodity before we even decided that there was a word called commodity is absolutely essential um, and this is essentially this is a picture and I've put some some descriptions here but this is essentially a picture of an online shopping cart and all I've gone is gone, gone to a on to a to a grocery store online and I've typed in salt and this is what I get I get table salt and of course I don't know if it's the case in your your countries but here you have to describe the cost per kilogram so I can have cheap salt which is 29p for 750 grams and that's 39 pence per kilogram. Strangely they have a bigger bag that looks really ugly and gives an impression of more value but it's actually slight uh, and it's slightly less which is 34 pence per kilogram. And then I get this thing called fine cellar sea salt but look at the difference in price. Um, and then get reduced sodium y you can see what I'm doing here it's the same product and the most startling one is the Schwartz salt grinder so the the crazy thing is that actually in there there are big grains big granules uh, blocks of salt which I grind myself so this in there is the unrefined or less refined version of this of the cheaper one but because of the customer experience is that I grind my own so I get something that's fresh and I don't want, I don't know if that makes any difference, but of course people assume it. But look at the difference in price, nearly 50 pounds per kilogram. It's startling. So 
simply by changing the value, check the value proposition, the, the customer experience, look at the difference that we can differentiate essentially exactly the same products. And if you go back to my uh, my blog, everythingbrilliant.co.uk, there's another example here. This is how we turn this into a game. We take the humble bin liner, and we ask we we ask people to then start to play an innovation game again to flex those innovation muscles to get people thinking thinking with their hands and thinking creatively. We ask for, and there are dozens and dozens and dozens of examples of different ways of differentiating the, the humble. Um, uh, humble bin liner. The next one, painstorming. So you find problems, not solutions. Um, uh, and this is a really crucial one. Ideas that don't solve a problem rarely go anywhere. So start looking for where the problems are first. And remember what I said about the about the the, the provocations. Provocations are really good at doing this. Okay, another example where is if if only I was talking to you live, I could ask you, do, do you does anyone know what this is? Um, this, I, by the way, one of the air, one of the things I do all the time, every day, is I subscribe to Facebook or Twitter um, uh, pages that go looking for clever things on crowdfunding, like Kickstarter. And here's what, what on earth is this? This, ladies and gentlemen, solves one of the greatest problems of the modern day. And that problem is how you take butter out of the fridge and spread it. <laughs> uh, so it, it is a problem, and it's a problem that we've lived with for decades, if not hundreds of years. And somebody had the audacity to imagine we must be able to solve that problem, and that's what they've developed. This is a, a knife that allows you to spread the butter and then spread it onto bread without it without it damaging the bread. Perfect. Another fantastic example. This chap here. Um, he bought. He has. A, he had a young son. He was really keen to have his son learn to ride his bicycle. He bought the bicycle. He took the his son and the the new bicycle to the park. Uh, and if if any of you have done this, you will understand it's much more difficult than you think it is. Um, it's you know learning to ride a bike is really difficult. And he dared to take the design of a bicycle that is hundreds of years old. That are billions of bicycles around the world and he dared to, to, to take something away to make it better. So he said well actually to start with it's good for, for children to learn to move on the bike and to balance on bikes but not given the complexity of, of using pedals. It's a perfect example. And here's some of mine. Um, I, the, I, I'm a guitar player, my children play the guitar actually the, 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 kind of the design of a guitar is quite difficult to, to learn. You have to peer over to look at the uh, your fingers so actually there's a there's a better more ergonomic way of fixing that guitar so the you know there, there is always going to be a an endless supply of of um, ideas to solve problems the starting one is well, actually what problem we're going to solve if you can figure that out ideas and innovation becomes easier there's the blue sky approach so you're thinking about radical ideas that can make the world better um, another one of my ins most inspiring um, examples. This in in that colour thing in there, that's actually like a net, um, so plastic net or a polypropylene net, and you stretch it. If so, this is designed for environments in the in in the developing world where if they have the skills to create baskets, they have the skills and the materials to create the structure. Uh, you stretch this this um, polypropylene thing, this netting in the middle, and under there is a is a, a vessel, a, a, a jar, or, or a pot, and then in humid, in the humid air, in the mornings or the evenings, passes through. It collects, the, it gets caught by this netting, and it, it gives you um, a rainwater. It's just a fantastic idea, and I have loads of blue sky ideas. This is the fun, um, the, the the fun part about it. About charging restaurants that actually throw away loads of loads of food. Um, it's a uh, number one, two, two. If I had a million pounds, I would create a machine that at, at night time looks at the road, finds the little fissures or little cracks, and fills them before they become potholes. A couple of our biggest customers are are, are businesses that fix roads, and the mechanics or the the economics of fixing a road is it doesn't pay to fix a crack, it pays to wait until that crack becomes a big hole. So I build this ro robot that, that does it at night. Um, and the last area is 
what's called disruptive ideas. So where you change the status quo and you create a completely new value proposition. Now, uh, the, my original presentation had a picture of EasyJet. Um, EasyJet was the disruptor in the UK um, marketplace for um, airlines. Um, and I understand that uh, FlyNAS is, is the uh, suitable equivalent here. What's really useful about that, whether it's FlyNAS or it's EasyJet or it's WestJet in the US, which I think was the original disruptor with the, or the, the original uh, organization that came up with that business model. The really important thing is, is actually they didn't disrupt um, the airline business, in my opinion. They disrupted the ability for the large established car carriers to make money. Actually, the experience was mostly the same. The, the aircraft was the same. The airport was the same. So much of it was the same. They just changed the, um, sorry, they disrupted the the, stat, the way in which British Airways and, and, the, and the likes of those made money. What they also did was they made the ability for people to fly well, they, they increase the size of the market. They change people's behaviours. They change people's attitudes. They they told everyone they could now afford to fly, where before it was the very wealthy people or business people that could afford to fly. They changed the marketplace and they made the marketplace bigger than ever before. And there's lots of ideas that I, we have. Um, again, th these are these are fun ideas. The um, the anti cafe, if you think. Um, uh, on every high street, if you certainly if you go to cities, if you go to to London, every fifth or sixth shop is a coffee shop. If you think about the coffee shop model, they you they provide a very nice environment. You pay, f they monetize that environment by selling coffee, and then lots of us go there and they we do a bit of work. The anti cafe disrupts it. The anti cafe, um, they create a nice environment. You pay for the environment and you get the coffee for free. So it's the same thing, brother, but you're completely disrupting the way that they make money. Um, enough about ideas. I'm going to move away from that first part of the um, of first part of the presentation: ideas to innovation. Remember, innovation ideas are not the same thing. Now, innovation isn't always easy. If it is, then we'd be doing more of it. It isn't always easy, but it is a simple concept. It is the commercialization of ideas but it's so worth it it solves problems for individuals organization communities it delights us it makes us fortunes it generates value it generates it drives growth the last two I think are really important is the ultimate human resource the next slide I'm going to show you is showing you how technology has killed businesses or killed the lives of businesses ideas are the thing that humans is the ultimate human resource. It's the advantage that human beings have over um, machines, over technology. It's the, it is the secret source of of, uh, of um, societies and 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 of uh, countries. Uh, also, the other one that's really important: innovation has never been. Yes, it's never had a greater currency. It's never been so important, but. The speed at which innovation can become obsolete is faster than yet than ever, and possibly the best example of that. Now, I, I am the type of person. I, I am the early adopter. I love to be one of the first people. I was the one of the first people I knew that 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 figured out how to go on the internet. I was one of the first people that I knew that understood how to use social uh, media. Um, I was the, one of the first people. That bought a GPS device. So that's the the tom tom or the sat nav that you stick to your car window. Now, arguably, and I I don't have one of those anymore, because I have a mobile phone. So possibly there's no better example of the 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 GPS business, the you know, the business that tom tom were in and Garmin and sat nav those, those sat nav devices. They are almost obsolete. In ten or twelve years. Because if we have a mobile phone, we don't actually need another device. There's benefits of having another device, but we don't need it. So that's how quickly an, an innovation can hit the market, can penetrate the market, and become almost obsolete. It's 10 or 12 or 15 years. And here's some, a good example of that. I'm not. This presentation isn't about creating a business case for innovation. I have another presentation that can do that. If you are someone that needs to persuade 
your um, your organization and your business leaders of the need I can help you with that this isn't the presentation but there is one slide I can't leave out this is um, so these are the average life company lifespan of Standard & Poor's so the top 500 organizations in in the uh, in the US and this this presentation is called technology is wiping out companies faster than ever so when I I was born in 1970 so when I first entered the world of work um, out of university in fact when I started my my first my first business in 1998 um, or, organizations were um, lasting 20 25 years um, actually of course because of the uh, economic crash in 2010 actually that was down to more like 15 or 16 years for the length of, a, of an organization that's how rapidly technology and markets are, are, are changing and look at the projection um, and this is one of the most important concepts if you know if you're if you're innovating or you want to innovate and you work in an established organization this is the most important slide and it's called the innovators paradox and that says Survival today requires coherence, coordination, and stability. If you were running a business, why wouldn't you want those things? It makes perfect sense. The paradox is that survival tomorrow requires the replacement of those erstwhile virtues. So actually, innovation requires risk, and we don't like risk in our business. And innovation requires uh, change, and we don't like change and innovation requires us to do so many things that are counterintuitive to good ways of running businesses and by the way the people um, that run the businesses and quite often and definitely the people in the middle management of those businesses they are programmed to be risk averse and they are programmed to be focused on turning the handle of getting of, of their process and not deviating from their process and those things are so different to to, to innovate the things we need for innovation and just to echo that there's another another great slide it's called a war on two fronts so on one hand we need we don't want to kill the cash cows providing important resources so we need you know we've got a business to run customers to keep happy people employees to to, to pay but on the other hand we need to keep looking for new ideas for new innovations and it's a real battle about how we how we do that and we need to recognize that we need in lo in doing that we need different behaviors and cultures and resources and KPIs and governance. Here's another one of the really important um, concepts. Uh, this is a concept I've been talking about for seven, eight, seven or eight, eight years. And I, I'm an innovator. I love ideas. I love change. I love creating new new ideas. I can't get rid of this. This is one of the another one of those most important concepts. Is that innovation has three different horizons. Not in all innovation is equal um, if you work in a mature organization um, you know I always say um, particularly if I go if I'm presenting at conferences if you got to the conference if you got to your office where you're listening to me today and your car didn't break down that's because the automotive industry has been optimizing their products for decades yep so it's Existing process, products and assets. We the, the, the we serving existing markets and clients. We're doing lot, thousands of ideas that we can implement in days or hours or weeks, perhaps months. But we can do lots of those. Those core that that horizon. So when when we go to our our we go to our factory and we're we're building um, we, we do we've got a three things to add to an engine. That's our horizon. We can't see beyond that. The second horizon is actually more about incremental products and assets, and that's, by the way, horizon one, the core, is absolutely the the, the territory for innovation or I idea schemes, suggestion schemes. The second horizon is more about the adjacent areas, so when we can expand into new markets, incremental ones, and and enter adjacent markets. And the third one is transformational, the breakthrough markets that don't yet exist. Now where, where we can do hundreds of those core horizon one we can um, we even thousands we can do perhaps a handful of transformational um, uh, and the other really key thing about this slide 
if you are running, um, and actually I met I met um, a, a bunch of uh, people from the uh, from the Gulf states um, at the Ideas UK. I presented the Idea, Ideas UK conference, where they are um, routinely they are asking every member of staff for one or two or three or four ideas. So if you if there's anyone here from the the Dubai police or know the Dubai police, they're asking, they're d demanding four ideas per person per year and there are 20,000 people that work for the Dubai police. What on earth are you going to do with 80,000 ideas? If one of those 80,000 or if if eight of those 80,000 ideas are transformational ideas, you won't, how on earth are you going to find them? They are almost going to be almost all around these core products that won't necessarily make a, make a, a leap, a change in terms of your innovation capability. Now the answer I'm going to introduce now um, this this concept that I, um, we call the innovate idea to innovation um, canvas. Now this is based on a concept called intrapreneurship, and that's the pursuit of entrepreneurial behaviours in the corporate setting. Lots of organisations have recognised that actually their main threat, the disruptors for their businesses, are likely to come from startups, where the culture is well, there isn't a culture that stops them. If you go back to my, my slide about the paradox, it's much easier to innovate in a small organization, and that's where the threats are coming from. So, how do we create that entrepreneurial behavior and spirit, but in, all, in, a, in a corporate setting? And there's some great examples Google and their 20% um, initiative is a great example. This isn't new, um, Lockheed Martin have been doing it for, for a decade or more. Um, there's some other great great examples uh, and the good news is you actually do have some entrepreneurs in already you just don't know who who they are um, so here's here's some here's here are the, the key things that you're looking for you are looking for the organ the people in your organization um, that are inquisitive that are naturally inquisitive that want to go and find out um, how things work you're looking for ones that actually do have some sense of of risk. Perhaps they are people that were entrepreneurs before they started working um, at your organization. Um, perhaps there, and there's a concept called, um, which um, is championed or did, came up um, with, it's about disagreeability. The, it, great innovators are disagreeable. Great innovators aren't happy, aren't satisfied to hear people say, that never work, or how are you going to do that? I can't see that how you would do that. They're disagreeable. They want they you know, they they want to, to solve problems. They they will they won't accept that something won't work. And those those people are great entrepreneurs. Um, you certainly need the movers and shakers. You know, people that uh, people trust and people people um, respect, and people that people will listen to. Um, and you need creative people as well. Now I can, I, there are some structured questionnaires. I can give you um, that find those people. So if you're asking, is anyone who wants to join our entrepreneurship um, strategy, answer these simple questions, and I can help you figure out who those those are. But they are the, the key 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 requirements. And the other really essential thing is the conditions. So you need do need the senior leaders to buy into this. You need time for the entrepreneurs to develop their ideas. Uh, this isn't necessarily something that's going to go happen quickly, particularly if you don't give them focus time. And most organizations don't, actually. Uh, say so the Google 20% is a good example where they say to anyone, you can have 20% of your time to create anything, to play, to, to experiment. In reality, people at Google routinely work 60, 70 hours a week. So it's not really time that, that they can do something else, it's extra time. Um, you certainly need some money because if those ideas are spotted and they're developed and they're, they're and we can demonstrate so through our experiments that they work, they need some money and they need governance, and then they need some guidance, which leads me to the last section, which is the canvas. Now, um, what is the canvas? Um, it's a description of how to innovate, and it's on one piece of paper. And it took a lot of time and energy, and I'm not sure there are many other examples where you can give one piece of paper that describes how, how you innovate. 
Now the, the concept of, can, of business canvases that was developed and if you know anything about um, the, the lean startup of, um, approach that the, I've taken that concept of a canvas so you put it all on one piece of paper sometimes it's easier to explain what things are by explaining what it's not it's absolutely not a process it doesn't describe there are some indications of which way to go but it isn't a case of say you do this and then you do this and you do this and you do this it isn't a process and it isn't necessarily a bit of software but software can help um, first and foremost it's an approach and you can you can take this and you can describe it and people know how to, in to innovate the starting point is an idea which is in the middle now either you direct an idea with a challenge ie we want ideas too which might require some facilitation we can help you with that Basim and, and uh, ES Kazada can help you with that um, it also might require some facilitation to capture ideas and to focus ideas as well or you allow the entrepreneurs to come and bring their pet project the pet, pet idea as well I would suggest the first the first one is a much better starting point but the idea isn't enough you need to describe this is the hard bit remember I said ideas are easy uh, this is the hard bit what's the function so what problem does it solve and how is it and how and why is it a better solution than what's, what's already there now if you can't describe if you can't find a way of describing it in roughly 140 characters like a tweet then it's probably not a good idea. If you can't describe what the problem is and get people to agree that to that, it's probably not a good idea. Have another idea. And then there's this concept of socializing. Um, and then, again, this goes back to what that, that slide I showed you. Why do I, why do I share, share my ideas? Well, because it's really hard, and it is really hard. So you have to fight the temptation to keep it to yourself. Our natural tendency is to build walls around our ideas and keep them safe and the best example the best way of describing this I've ever come across is that actually sometimes we can feel that our idea is like our baby and we don't give our baby to people that we don't think will love our baby as much as we love our baby that's a natural feeling it's a very human response but of course ideas aren't babies are they they're, they're just ideas and you'll have another one so socialize it talk to people about it ask for their feedback and fail fast and don't dwell on ideas um, that don't work pivot to something that will work um, perhaps that's perhaps it's perhaps you pivot towards something that actually solves a more precise problem or a different problem or you simply have another idea and run experiments and fail fast and iterate and pivot and I can share through Bassam some of the and the ES Consulting some of these um, these tools and these these spreadsheets to uh, to do that. By the way, if you're looking at this and you think, oh, actually, this looks like Lean Startup or it looks like Design Thinking, it absolutely does. You'll rec you will of course recognise these concepts and, and and ideas from those 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 tools. The second step, the second bulk, is to go from that idea if we validated it to a certain extent we then go to what we call the idea to prototype stage uh, and there is a go no go so has it passed should it be pursued uh, if it's yes then we do really need to recognize and that this is remember this is precisely for entrepreneurs It's precisely for people that have ideas and want to innovate within an established organization now the organization is very unlikely to innovate, to invest in ideas that don't meet the organizational strategy, that aren't, aren't aligned commercially to what the organization is, is, is aiming for. It just won't work. So if you can't fill these in, then it's going to be really, really tough. And remember, this is about getting an idea, going from an idea to a prototype. So to build the prototype, to test it, what are the key activities I'm going to do and what are the what's the resources I need whether that's people or maybe some money as well that's the really really key thing and again socialize it and actually it's an iterative process lots of ideas will then go this way and you'll change something about the idea or the function or the solution and you'll go back and refine yeah and you go round and round and we need to accept that some ideas will never move forward that they will just drop down in fact most ideas won't get beyond this point and that's absolutely fine the key thing is that we're spending our time and energy 
on the right ideas, the ideas with the most promise. Um, and if we get this far and the idea doesn't move forward, well, do you know what? The entrepreneur understands better how to innovate and they will be likely to be more successful next time. It's as simple as that. Then we move to the next go, no go. Um, so if it gets to this point, the idea stands up on, it, on its own. Um, and we need to then create the prototype and, the, and what we, we are expecting, um, what, we need to, what we are building and what outcomes we expect. Uh, and that's a test prototype. If it's, if it's a physical thing, perhaps we would call it a prototype. If it's around a service improvement, a business process improvement, perhaps we would call more, we would more likely call that a test. But I'm using those two words interchangeably, a prototype and a test being the same thing. And the important thing, well, what, are, what outcomes are we expecting? Who are we going to do it with? What are the, are the, are the customers involved, etc.? And then we run the test. And then we get to that next go, no go. And by the way, you can see that's the arrow there. It may be that when we do that, we realize that we do need to redefine it and go back through that cycle. Um, and then we can build and we can commercialize it. And that's the whole, that's the whole canvas. Now you can have a canvas um, from us um, and Bassem has very kindly converted that canvas um, into Arabic. Um, as well to make it a little bit e easier, it is a say intended to be a guide, a, a process, a um, not a process, a description on on one one piece of paper. How do you do it? What are the first steps? I'm reaching the end of the the presentation. The first steps. Um, number one, well, you need to find those entrepreneurs. Remember, I said I can help you with some structured questions to help find those that first group of entrepreneurs. Or you simply ask and they come forward and, and you work. You get, go, get, go back to my 12 bricks example. Um, if you just look at 12 bricks and you think, what on earth can I make with 12 bricks? It's really tough. If you start to piecing them together, it gets easy and it gets fun. And if you challenge them, it happens really, really quickly. And people, people are building stuff that are useful in next to no time at all. And that's the thing. Challenge them. Support and mentor them or get some help to support and mentor them. But the most important thing is, don't stop. It takes time. Stick with it. Nothing, it, if it's, it will be worth it, but you need to give it some time. The final thoughts, um, or if you please do connect with me, um, get a copy of the uh, the canvas for Bassam at ES Consulting, who's organised this um, webinar. Thank you again, Bassam. Um, and feel free to follow my blog um, and and give any 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 feedback. Thanks, Michael. Fantastic. Uh, questions is enabled. If anyone has questions, you can type uh, your question there. I do have one question from Abdullah. He's asking, he's asking you to elaborate more about innovation challenge and why it is important to why it's important to define them. Of course, yeah. Um, the, the I think the really important thing. Well, I guess there are, there are two things. I've, I've already described using the, that innovation, sorry, the 12 bricks innovation tool that actually when we are given um, restrictions, and it is a paradox, but when we are given restrictions, when we, we are, when we are asked to solve problems, then we find creativity easier. Um, so from an ideation point of view, we know that that's the case and, and if we can give people, and it, it is it's important that we get the right challenge, but then we, we get ideas that are, are more, more useful. The organize the best reason for an organization to find challenges, and we've seen this lots of times, um, if you simply ask for any ideas, it's very often you will get ideas that solve an individual's problems. Now the individual's problems, the member, you know, the employee's problems, may be aligned to the organ. Sorry, the, yes, sorry. The individual's problems may be aligned to the organization's problems, so it, the idea may be very valid, but it might not. So what you get, if you just ask for, for for any ideas, what you get is such a varied range of ideas. Now, when someone gives you an idea, they give you the idea because they believe it's of value. 
They believed if the idea was implemented, their lives would be, would be easier, their customers would be happier. That's why they give you ideas. And if you don't implement the idea, then they're disappointed. They don't feel, and the more, the more times someone offer you, offers you an idea and it doesn't get implemented, the less chance there is of ever getting an idea out of that person again. So the key thing with challenges is you're defining that a scope. You're, def you're, you're recognizing that for ideas to be implemented, we need, a, we need to identify a problem that, that needs solving. We need to be able to commit resources, time, or money to solving that problem. And we need to be able to commit to interrupting our, our working day uh, of all the other objectives that I'm doing to solve for my job, I'm going to interrupt those. I'm going to I'm going to find time and space to solve the problem. And the way you do that is actually by and, and challenges allow you to do that. It allows you to focus your time and energy on the things that matter to the organisation. Great. I have another question from <clears throat> Abdullah Al Hamid. He said, "You said you said talk about your idea." but ideas get stolen. What is your advice would you give to pitch idea? Yeah, it's, it's, it's one that I, um, that I get asked an awful uh, lot about. Um, well, what about, protecting, what about protecting your idea? Um, and, I, um, and perhaps I am being stupidly naive in just publishing and telling everyone all of my ideas. But I do that with an inner confidence that either I do something with the idea, either I implement it, either I take some steps to implement it, or I'm not going to do anything with it and I will have a bet I will have a better idea later. Now of course that if that's because they are all my ideas. If I'm working within a large organization and let's say I'm working on some technology, then of course I will be restricted to how many how I can share those ideas outside of my organization um, you know to put potentially com competitors absolutely but um, I think the key the key message is it be, be brave the more ideas ideas trigger ideas which trigger ideas which trigger ideas which trigger ideas now, every week at least at least once a week I get emails or I get messages from my blog of people telling me their ideas um, and I, I don't want to make this this person sound crazy but I do have a, a Russian gentleman. But I think he's I think he's a gentleman. Um, his name is in is in Russian, so I can't actually tell. Who has invented technology that can read people's minds? <laughs> now, one of my favourite memes about ideas is from um, an amazing lady called. Actually, if I go if I click the next button, I can show it to you. Amazing lady called. It's one of the slides I didn't use. This lady here called Jocelyn Goldfein or Goldfine. Um, she was with Facebook for many years, uh, and she's written a fantastic article which I've retweeted and put on my blog called "The Innovation Dead End." And she says the problem with ideas is that really innovative ideas are roughly indistinguishable from really dumb ideas. That's kind. That's that really sums it up. It's so difficult. If it doesn't sound dumb, then it might not actually be that good an idea. Okay, I have so, another question <clears throat> sure. from Abdullah Ahmed. He said, how to control type of ideas without limiting creativity? Yeah, it, and it is a really difficult one. Um, and it's all about the ch how you describe the challenge. And, and I'm always really open. Um, I can describe the benefits of challenges as I've already done, but creating the challenge is difficult making sure that it's narrow enough that you get ideas that you get, you're getting ideas to um, that answer a question that solve a problem that to or to best exploit an opportunity but broad enough to not to limit creativity and I won't pretend that that's a diff that's an easy balance. It is a difficult balance. Uh, one of the one of the reasons what we always try to use a visual stimulus 
like the you know the um, the we've used lots of times the example or the video of changing four tires in less than five seconds is incredible so you're giving lots of inspiration but you're giving people enough scope um, that you can you can describe sorry the enough scope that you're getting a you know, relatively similar um, or ideas that that, that meet a a, um, a space specific requirement. So I won't pretend it's it's uh, it's easy. It isn't, but it is very very important. Okay. Uh, and there are <clears throat> facilitation tools. There are uh, techniques that we that we use to help that. And uh, um, so it absolutely can be done. But it's it's certainly worth the effort. But it is the hard bit. I have another question from <clears throat> Majid Ibrahim. Any specific reasons behind calling? the business model canvas. I think he's asking about idea to innovation business model canvas. Um, calling it the canvas or calling it idea to innovation? Uh, I the both? question is both, I think. <laughs> it's called. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bi business model canvas is a great, a, a business model canvas is a great idea. It's a, a canvas, it's a, it's a framework, it's a, sorry, it's a frame on one on one piece of paper that allow, allows you to build a description on one piece of paper I love that that uh, that converse that so that concept um, and if you do if you go if you google business model canvas then you'll see lots of examples broadly the same lots of there are will be some variations the original business model canvas was described for an entrepreneur to describe their idea and, and then describe their business, how their business would work. So the, the original business model canvas has requires you to describe, well, what are my key activities? What are my partners? Uh, who are my customer segments? How will I reach my customer segments? So it's very much designed around an entrepreneur to take go from idea to starting a business. The canvas I've developed is very specifically for entrepreneurs. It's how do we apply that thinking and those methodologies, but apply them to someone that works in an organization that wants to cr go from idea to product. So I've simply taken the concept and I've, and, then I, and I've altered it for a very specific person for a very specific requirement. Great. Um, one more question from Nathan Meath. So if there was a very good implemented idea that could not be commercialized we don't consider it an innovative one. Is that right? <clears throat> is commercializing all about creating revenues or there are other aspects? Yeah, commercializing, probably that's where, the, where, where that word doesn't work so, so well, um, I would agree. Um, actually, an idea that makes us feel better is, um, is, a, is an innovation. Um, uh, an idea that makes uh, that would lead to employees more engaged. Now, how do you put how do you put a pound or a um, or a dollar value on um, employees be feeling more engaged? How do you do that? It's extremely hard to do. Um, so that I, I I I agree. If we're just talking about the word commercializing in terms of making money, then it restricts the way we can describe innovation. So the answer is no. Um, it, I guess the, the it, we uh, we had to we had to choose a common definition of innovation, which by the way is very difficult to do. We've chosen that that one, commercializing ideas. But yes, it does assume that there's a that there's some revenue, that there's some pound or, or dollar or dollar, um, a, a benefit to it. And of course. Ideas can can be innovation. You can innovate and not have any requirement to to make any money. So I I, I, I agree. Um, is not isn't that isn't the uh, the key thing. It's still an innovation if you implement it. Okay. <clears throat> At the end, uh, I would like to thank you, Michael, for um, being with us and presenting um, this this presentation. I would like to thank all the attendees. I hope uh, that. Uh, the presentation was uh, uh, formative and we learned something new from it. Um, the presentation will be live on, on YouTube also if someone would like to uh, access it again. We will send the link 
to the participants and how to uh, access the, the, the webinar in the future. Um, uh, our next webinar will be uh, in Arabic also and it will go through the same concept idea to innovation to have it more for people who um, speak Arabic only and, and, and spread the concepts around. Uh, any final thoughts, Michael? No, just to thank you everyone for um, for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And if there's any any feedback where we can make it better, please please do pass it on. Thanks a lot. Thanks for everybody. We are ending the uh, this webinar. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Have a good Bye, day. Everyone.